Hi, my dog lovers. I believe that we are live now. Welcome to our regular Thursday talk. My name is Dr. Peter Tobias. For those who me, and a lovely person with me is Leah. And Leah is going to be helping us to manage today live broadcast. So we also have um, some other team members hoping to post some links and um, and help you. Now, I know that my internet connection is slightly unstable, I believe. Um, Leah, can you hear me and see me? Is everything okay? Uh, yeah, I can hear you and see that we're streaming on Facebook. Okay, great. Um, in the past month, I was talking almost daily on video and, and recording videos for you and just kind of trying to find ways to support you because um, it has been a difficult time and it looks like the difficult time is not going to be over anytime soon because of the consequences of the situation. However, our dogs are keeping us well and fit and healthy because they take us out, they bring us to different thoughts and they make us uh, feel happy. Yesterday, I uh, took packs in the morning for a little swim and we swam together and I was shooting a video of um, him, a slow motion video of him running in the water. And it made me so happy to actually see him in his element and kind of carefree and, and um, just enjoying life. And I'm hoping that I'll be able to um, contribute to the quality of your dog's life and also your life through your dog. One of the biggest problems that we are now facing is finances. Um, many people have lost their job. Our society has been just kind of crumbling under the pressure of the COVID-19 crisis. And I thought that it may be a good idea to start a course that will help you to not only keep your dog healthy and prevent problems, but also safe on veterinary care whenever possible. And it doesn't necessarily mean that um, you should be Ignoring your vet or not going for annual checkups or not going to your vet when needed, it means that you can possibly handle some of the situations yourself. Now, I have many um, stories that I could share with you. Um, but one recent one is um, a good example of what often happens and why I take, um, why I do these uh, little sessions and why I try to write and teach you as much as I can. Uh, my friend, Marianne, who um, has had uh, her dog, Ali, for many, many years, uh, texted me and said, Peter, I've been, um, I've been having some problems with, uh, with Ali because uh, she's been having diarrhea and we don't really know what to do. And uh, I've been seeing so many different people. And um, I just kind of inquired a few you know, I had a few questions and asked Marianne about how long it's been going on and it's been pretty chronic for several months and uh, most of the kind of traditional routes were used. And um, I just gave Marianne a few simple suggestions such as a uh, faster dog um, for at least 24 hours and then feed her only once a day at digestive enzymes because she's older and she couldn't really eat well at probiotics and uh, feed cook diet as opposed to raw or kibble. And uh, suddenly uh, things, uh, Mary and actually texted me yesterday and said, you know, everything is good now. And that made me so happy. I didn't charge Marianne. I didn't really, uh, uh, it's, it wasn't a business transaction, but, but it made me so much more happy to know that I could actually empower someone and give them, uh, give them simple suggestions that actually are common sense. And sometimes in medicine, and that's what I've noticed in um, veterinary medicine, we have been trained to kind of look for complex answers sometimes and uh, make uh, many things bigger deal than they are. And if we went back to nature, back to uh, the common sense, it actually you know, yields quite often better results. So today I'd like to start, and, and, and I'm hoping that this is gonna be um, series of, of uh, webinars and recordings on this topic of teaching you how to keep your dog healthy and how to prevent disease and how to understand medicine better. Today, I'd like to talk about the paradoxes of medicine because I, I personally think that um, 
medicine uh, is, modern medicine is not evil. Modern medicine can be absolutely fantastically helpful. It can, uh, you know, I, I, I know people who had their extremities resutured and, and attached back to their body when they were working with a chainsaw. I know people who would otherwise be dead if they didn't have an open heart surgery or brain surgery for aneurysm. Um, modern medicine is absolutely fantastic, fantastic when it comes to technology and technological advances. But when it comes to treating a chronic disease and how we see conditions and medical problems, that's a little different story. And it all starts with um, just kind of limited perception of, um, of the body and healing or different perception. You know, one person will see a beautiful flower in the garden. The other person will see it as a weed. So the matter how we perceive things matters in life and in medicine. Um, diarrhea, let's start with diarrhea because I often talk about diarrhea and Marianne's dog Ali had diarrhea, is um, most often seen as, as the problem. Um, nobody asks why is the diarrhea happening? Well, maybe people do ask, but still diarrhea is seen as the problem. It never is seen as a cleansing reaction that possibly is getting in the body is getting rid of pathogens or it's signaling us that there is wrong diet or it's signaling us that there are pars, parasites that actually happened with another friend of mine. I've had a lot of people, a lot of friends calling lately. Um, she had a puppy and her puppy had diarrhea and we just kind of went through the list and I said, you know, you have to check your puppy for parasites. It had parasites and diarrhea is gone now because parasites have been treated. Um, so diarrhea should not be seen as evil. Sometimes in the acute form, it is actually, it should be treated as the body's way to re rebalance and cleanse. And in the chronic form, yes, I agree that is a sign that something has not been addressed for long term. And chronic, I mean, more than a few days, more than a few weeks. If your puppy or dog has chronic diarrhea, obviously, you know, we are missing some sort of point. Pain. If I talk about acute pain, let's say I kick my toe and suddenly I'm really in pain and I'm, I'm swearing <laughs> because I kicked my toe. Um, the body pain is actually a really good mechanism. You know, there are some people who genetically, um, uh, who are affected genetically and who cannot feel pain. And it can be life threatening, right? Like they can have their hand on the stove and they will not know. So, so pain actually can be useful. It's a useful signal for us to know that something is going on. Chronic pain, once again, is a totally different story. It means that we have not addressed the acute pain properly and we have ignored the body signals. And now we have an issue that is long-term chronic and sometimes lifetime, lifelong. Uh, so there's the difference between acute and chronic. Inflammation, once again, you know, how many people do take anti-inflammatories when, uh, when there's pain? My sister just heard her back recently and her partner immediately, you know, tried to help by saying, you know, you have to take ibuprofen. And my sister, because she's lived around me for a long time, she says, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to exercise. I'm going to see uh, properly. I'm going to see my physiotherapist. Maybe I get some acupuncture. Maybe I take some omegas, but I will not take ibuprofen because the inflammation is actually the body's way to heal. Crazy enough. Acute inflammation is the body's way to heal. And if you suppress the inflammation, you actually not only suppress the inflammation, you know, inflammation increases blood circulation. It increases um, sensation in that area. So you don't do silly things and injure more. Uh, inflammation actually is the first step to healing. And if we block it, we actually block the healing. And that's how we end up with chronic conditions. Vomiting, right? Uh, the body is signaling either food is wrong or there is maybe another serious problem like pancreatitis or uh, your dog ate something bad, which is not rare, right? Um, and then we get into itching. Itching again is the body's way to signal that there is something out of line, something in disharmony. Uh, suppressing the itching 
uh, leads to further problems uh, if we ignore the initial issue. It's like you know taking a sleeping pill when the house is on fire. That, that's not going to go well. So if we suppress the itching by, let's say, steroid medication, um, the steroid medication suppresses the itching, but it also suppresses the healing and the signaling system. And uh, as I said, if you take a, a sleeping pill at the time your house is on fire, that's a serious problem, right? Like we know the consequences. Um, I can go on about, you know, cholesterol, high cholesterol. People say, okay, there is high cholesterol. Let's, uh, let's suppress or let's, uh, let's take um, cholesterol reducing drugs. But um, that's not really exactly uh, what we want to do. We want to look at the diet. We want to look at genetic predisposition. But most of the time, uh, you know, high cholesterol is actually, even if we have predisposition in the family, it is a sign that our diet is a little off. Like it has been proven over and over that when we eat properly, when we reduce animal protein and dairy products, and when we reduce sugar, that our cholesterols, cholesterol levels are, are uh, low. And I'm saying sugar here. And I go like, what does sugar has to do with cholesterol? Well, the problem is that every ingredient, every food, uh, an item that we put in our, our body and our dog's body affects the metabolism of other substances. You know, my mother had just recently, actually a year ago, had a very serious gallbladder issue. She had a gallbladder abscess and uh, she had to go into surgery. She's now 85 and it was very serious and life-threatening. So while they done the surgery and removed the gallbladder, I can see that uh, that in the in the senior home where she lives, she she actually is getting still the, the poor diet that she was getting before, right? The butter and the, the bread. And, you know, even in the hospital when she was there, they were giving her stuff with butter after, after gallbladder surgery. So, you know, Western medicine is really good in removing, let's say the gall gallbladder, but then nobody's asking, what is your mother eating? And should we be actually addressing that? And should we address her bad habits? Of course we should, but you know, it's, it's difficult. Um, I, I would say that the perspective of how we see all this really matters. Whether we see diarrhea and pain and inflammation and vomiting and itching as the enemies or as the problems, or maybe the signal points, the signal lights that there's something going on. And that's a huge difference. So the perspective matters. And because we live in the world of anti, we have anti-inflammatory, anti-diarrheas, uh, painkillers so anti-pain medication or uh, anti-itch medication we um, kind of believe that that whatever symptom we have we have to suppress and once we start suppressing it's really like removing the signal bulbs from the um, from the dashboard of your car if you remove the the oil light it doesn't necessarily mean that the oil will stop leaking if you remove the signal lights from uh, the, the, the cockpit of an airplane, that's gonna be a serious problem because we will not know what's going on. We suppress the signal lights, the body signals. And when we suppress them, the signal lights, the body will try to attempt to signal more and more and more, but it's going to gradually deteriorate because we will not be addressing the original symptoms. And that is, that is my biggest issue with Western medicine, that we use the anti-drugs as the first line of defense, as opposed to asking what we should be doing, how to, let's say, reduce the pain, because I don't know, uh, back pain is a result of, let's say, poor core strength or an injury that may happen by slipping or sliding, or maybe lack of magnesium or selenium in the body because, uh, you know, the muscles are not functioning properly. So, um, once again, the most important part is to remember that the anti-medication should be left as the last resort, as opposed to the first resort. Um, the you know the painkillers or anti-medication may lead to more damage, lack of repair, side effects, sometimes addictions to the medication, I or addiction to surgery. <laughs> you know, I have one very dear friend. She's now in her 90s or late 80s. I, I don't know because obviously ladies don't share their age. But every time I see her, she proudly pronounces or announces that she had another back surgery. And she likes to see her surgeon. 
and and she she likes to she likes to get the attention but it is not a good idea to to really address our pain and discomfort with the most drastic measures and you know when you see a surgeon yeah we will probably recommend a surgery and when you see uh, someone who is used to prescribing drugs they will prescribe drugs when you see a physiotherapist or acupuncturist they will use their techniques so it's going to be your goal to kind of inform yourself and understand these basic principles and the basic paradox in medicine that the body signals us or your dog's body signals and then what we should not do is to suppress the symptoms at least in the acute stages because the chronic stages like when when someone is in lifelong pain and you know they're 70 or 80 sometimes you may need to use pain medication but it is not always uh, the best way to start with. So um, how can we address inflammation? How can we address uh, diarrhea without, um, without really going against the body? I'm gonna ask you one question. Do you like when someone is making you to do something, forcing you to do something? I don't. And I, I'm, I, I'm safe, I feel safe to bet that you probably don't either. And when we force the body to do something against its own will, it's like it's saying, hey, there's a problem, there's a problem. And you go, shut up. I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to know about it. I don't want to feel pain. I don't want to see my dog limping. I'm going to put him on painkillers. But you know, the painkillers will reduce the pain and your dog will go crazy again and it will structurally damage the shoulder or the hip or whatever it is if it's not addressed so you know the force in medicine is something that we really need to be concerned about i am always really perplexed and i mentioned the story of my mother um that a human Really ask about whether they you know you're overweight, should reduce your food intake, or don't eat saturated fats, or something basic. But very rarely doctors ask. So you know, what what are your dietary habits? Uh, do you drink Coke or do you eat sugar? How much? Uh, do you, I eat white flours and 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 saturated fats? Like doctors really don't have time for that. The weird thing is that veterinarians always ask about food, but we know what the problem is in veterinary medicine, that veterinary medicine has been closely connected to kibble manufacturers and, um, and um, processed pet food companies. And there is a financial interest to sell more food because, you know, honestly, vets, if they didn't have processed food, uh, they would be able to, they would reduce their income by 30%. And sometimes they have mortgages, they have families, they have loans for the practice, they have expensive equipment. It's not easy. So you shouldn't be mad with your veterinarian that he or she recommends processed food, but you don't need to buy it, right? Uh, there is, you know, there, there are challenges with food. Um, just recently, I looked at um, a processed food a bag and it was a liver disease diet and it had rendered fat as one of the first ingredients. Like we know that, that fat for liver disease is not really the greatest way to feed our dogs. I would love to have a very honest uh, discussion with uh, the nutritionists and formulators of these diets. Like it would be a riot. Like I would bring them on here and I would be very respectful I'm not really angry. I'm more perplexed how anyone can do that. And I'm also perplexed that people who buy these diets don't read the labels. So read the labels and ideally feed your dog homemade food, whether it's cooked or raw. Uh, we do have the recipe maker on our website. I'm sure that my team will post the link. Uh, you know, I, it is so, so simple. The basic 80% of, of disease prevention is super simple and 20% is bad luck and, and, and complicated and difficult. But you know, if you look at 80%, that's a pretty good result. Like you have a lot of control. Um, in my practice, when I opened my holistic practice in the late 90s, I was shocked that I was able to reduce the use of Western drugs by 85, 90%. I almost never prescribed them and I had better results. 
I couldn't really go back. I really couldn't um, couldn't uh, go back to prescribing of anti-medicine, anti-inflammatories, anti-diarrheals, and all that. You know, if you're curious how to address diarrhea or itchy skin or vomiting or pancreatitis, you can go on my website. You can look uh, look up um, blogs and articles. It'll kind of explain these principles a little more in detail. Um, so what do we do about um, addressing all these symptoms? Because, you know, it would be easy to just kind of bitch and complain or say, this is not right. And it actually often happens in medicine that we kind of say, this is not right, but we don't have a solution. Or I've seen people in, in the holistic field complaining about diet and kibble and so on. And sometimes they have solutions and sometimes they don't. I like to offer solutions because I think that without offering solutions, I'm just bitching and complaining and, and, and that is not okay. I'm not necessarily saying that complaining sometimes doesn't get, get us results or it emotionally can give us a release of stress, but you know, in the long run, it's not a solution. Uh, for many years now, I've been um, teaching people and dog lovers in our community about healing cycle. And healing cycle is a super simple principle, but pretty much any healing falls into this healing cycle. Originally, it had three steps. And now I've added one more, and I'll tell you more about it. So obviously, uh, the first one is diet, because diet is the fuel for the body. We all know that um, if we put the wrong fuel in our gasoline car, let's say you make a mistake and you put the diesel fuel in the gasoline car, it's gonna be a problem. Um, and, and we are doing that to our dogs by feeding them kibble. And even if it's so-called holistic kibble, believe me, I actually have an insider knowledge from the industry how kibble is made. Quite a few years back, I was at the at a, a conference and there was a manufacturer of uh, one of the very, very well-known processed foods that is, that, is, um, that is considered better. And I often hear people feeding it. Unfortunately, I cannot give you the name because I have a, I have a rule that I never comment on somebody else's products by names. But I was talking to the executives of, from the company and they were saying, you know, we are so proud. We are taking more mechanically separated chicken or ordering more mechanically separated chicken than McDonald's in Canada. And I was blown away because every time I go to the, their display, there's beautiful ingredients, the beautiful meat and the beautiful vegetables and all is displayed beautifully. And then they tell me that, that they're the highest, uh, highest orders or purchaser of pink slime or mechanically separated chicken. So, uh, you know, I, I'd love the world to be different, but you have to be realistic. And uh, kibble is a form of food that can hide pretty much anything. So be careful if you do feed dehydrated food or kibble. Ah, I know sometimes you think that it's financial, financially unaffordable to feed um, homemade food or time consuming. Um, I can't be, I, you know, I, I, I can't tell you how, how wrong this is. And, and I don't like to say that this is wrong, but, but truly it only takes five to 10 minutes. And when you add the cost of food plus um, the cost of veterinary expenses, and also the lost time, the lost years of, of your dog's life on average, um, it's a no-brainer. Um, some time ago, we asked our, our dog lovers from our community to uh, submit a little, or fill a little survey out. And um, we didn't really, we asked whether they feed raw food or homemade diet or processed food. And we didn't ask how long they've been feeding it. But even, even despite that, 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 that piece of information that was missing, we saw a difference of one and a half years in the lifespan of dogs that are on kibble and dogs that are on raw or cooked, cooked food. 
And, and that means that some of these dogs have been on the diet only for a year or two because people say, no, I feed raw. Like I didn't ask whether they feed raw since, since puppyhood or fr from the puppy stage or they started later on. So it does make a difference. And so, so first, first um, part of the healing cycle is uh, to nourish and to provide the right food and the right nutrients. Um, just recently, just a couple of days ago, I had a phone call with one of my friends who is my yoga teacher as well and a very good friend. And we started talking about supplements. And, uh, and she says, you know, I know you're not into supplements, but uh, this is what I'm doing. And I said, what do you mean I'm not into supplements? <laughs> How could that be? She said, well, you are, we're always saying that you're into whole food and, and whole food here and whole food there. And, 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 and you don't like supplements. I was I was so surprised because what I meant by whole food, whole food supplements, not whole food as food only. And I will explain that. When you, um, when you eat food, uh, just general or give your dog food in general, it, it, it should have all the nutrients. If we live in the, in the ideal world where the nutrients are recycled um, through soil and through basically the animals going back in the soil and so on, and the produce and the compost going back in the soil where the food came from. But the, this, this kind of cycle is, is present only in the wildest places like Africa. In our society, the food that we get from California will, will arrive to, let's say, Ontario, and it never goes back to California. So we have depleted soils, depleted nutrients, whether it's meat or plants. So I, I do believe in supplements, but there is a huge difference in supplements. Some of them are synthetic and they, they are not whole food. And the, the supplements that are fermented, they're bound in the, the, let's say the vitamins, they're bound in the, in the whole food, in the bioprotein of the fermented media. And that's what I call whole food. I, I just realized I made such a mistake and be making such a mistake for lo such a long time because often I say, you know, people ask me what I do. I say, I'm a vet and I, 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 I formulate whole food supplements and I write and I teach. And then I see them a month later and they say, oh, you're the one who makes the dog food. <laughs> and so I realized that I've been making this mistake. I, I, I do formulate whole food supplements that are fermented. And the difference between the synthetic and the whole food is, is really uh, clear. Um, the synthetic vitamins are basically, you know, the ingredients that you made of coal and crude oil. <laughs> Believe it or not, that's how vitamins are made. And the whole food, uh, whole food supplements are fermented. So you take the vitamins and you put them in the bioprotein of the fermentation media and they become whole food. And, and, and that's, how, that's, that, that's, how, uh, that's how they are made. Um, this is one of the reasons why they don't make stomach, uh, they, they give you stomach upsets when you, um, when you take um, whole, whole food fermented vitamins. One of the human companies uh, that, I, that, that does fermentation is for example, Garden of Life or new chapter. Um, those are the companies that do embrace fermentation and we are the, the animal based or dog, dog oriented company that does fermentation. So nutrition and nutrients are super important and, and they're the first step in the healing cycle. Uh, the people who argue that supplements are not needed, um, I only encourage you to go and read some of the experiences that people have before and after. I'm not here to kind of talk about supplements today more. I only want to say one more thing. If you go in your garden and you see, you know, kind of tomatoes that are not thriving, that are not growing very well, the, the leaves are yellow, you know something is wrong and you most likely will assume that the nutrients are missing. We kind of accept that our gardens need to be fertilized. And at the same time, we um, ignore the fact that our bodies and our dog's bodies need to be fertilized because of the depletion of the nutrient cycle. Now, the second part of the, the healing cycle is getting rid of toxins, detox. So the first one is nourish. The second one is detox. Toxins are omnipresent. We have altered our environment. And I will not give you the doom and gloom news about toxins in nature. But I want you to understand 
how toxins work. Every cell, every part of your body has cells and the cells have receptors. And the receptors are almost, see them as locks and keys. So basically receptors for enzymes, receptors for certain um, minerals or nutrients. And some of the minerals actually can compete with toxins. See it this way. Let's say you have a reserved parking spot in a parking, parking uh, lot. And, and you know that that spot is reserved for you the potassium or you the calcium, okay? And suddenly you have lead parking in that spot. You won't be able to park. So the lead will block the parking spot for the calcium or magnesium or iron would uh, block or, or mercury would block the parking spot for, merc for iron, for example. But there's good news because you can actually, you can give the, the bad toxins, the, the heavy metals, a parking ticket and they're out and you can park again. And the parking ticket or the bylaws are cleanses in the body. So I'm giving you these analogies, parking lot versus cleanse and detox. See the toxins as the illegal, illegally parked cars and see the good minerals as the legally parked cars. And when you give, when you park the, the good minerals in your, in your dog's cells receptors, the toxins will not be able to latch onto the receptors. So it's super important, not only for nourishing and making sure that your dog's body functions properly, it's also important to give the right nutrients because you will prevent the toxins from getting latched onto the cells and making creating a havoc in the biochemical reactions. If you ever have done hair test or hair key test, you see that there are some competing minerals, competing minerals and heavy metals. As I said, mercury and iron, calcium and lead, and I could go on here, but it's super important to understand that the toxins are the illegally parked cars of your dog's cells and body. So what do we do? We do detox. I embrace detox once every six months because you know your dogs um, go out, they breathe in air, they drink water, they roll in the soil, they uh, walk on golf courses and, and parks where there is treatment uh, chemicals. It's in my mind, the least I can do to do once every six month cleanse. So the second step is detox. Good nutrients block illegal parking of the bad nutrients or not nutrients, the heavy metals and the toxins. And remember that there's 37 with 21 zeros chemical reactions happening every second in the body. It's, it's absolutely mind boggling. And if you don't have the nutritional status and the toxic status of your dog in line, you will start seeing some problems, diarrhea, vomiting, itchy skin, liver disease, whatever it is. And then instead of addressing detox and nutrition, we are gonna put the dog on the anti-diarrheal pills or anti-vomiting pills, but the body is screaming and saying, something is going on, help. And you tell it to shut up if you give these drugs. And once again, I'm not saying that these drugs are like anti-drugs are never, should be never used, but they should be our, our last resort. So, Remember, um, whole food nutrients as opposed to synthetic vitamins. Um, we have, uh, our friends are here with us in our house because they got stuck. They couldn't go back to Europe. The flights were canceled and they're just basically staying here and helping us. Um, and I um, just I just had to go and, and get something in their bathroom. And I saw their synthetic supplements on the, on the shelf. And I was so tempted to say something, but I, didn't mean to lecture them and I didn't, but <laughs> I'm just waiting for an opportunity to tell them, hey, you know, these vitamins are not really the greatest because they are cheap. You can buy them for next to nothing and you can buy a lot of them, but, you know, try to actually achieve the same results that you have, or some of you have seen with the whole food nutrients with the synthetic supplements. Um, they create this kind of chemical excess. And the first sign of it is that when you 
give them to your dog on empty stomach or you take them on empty stomach that they make you sick. The body refuses them. Uh, so read the body's uh, signal, read the body's signals. So the last, sorry, the third step in the healing cycle is uh, aligning the spine and working with the muscles and working with the electrical system of the body. You know, the body is um, an electric system, believe it or not. We, our body functions on the level of electrical charge. And um, in some cases, the energy flow, we can call it energy flow, uh, gets blocked. And when it gets blocked, then it affects our internal organs. It affects the cells in the body. It affects um, um, pretty much everything that goes on. If any of you have had neck problems, you know that if um, you have sore neck, it feels like you cannot really think straight, you cannot move, your body aches, you may have digestive problems and other stuff. And it's just the neck, but the neck actually is a governing line energy center for the energy flow to the head and also to the body. I often teach about um, the effect of colors on the body and general health. Uh, I'm a big proponent of harnesses. Um, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to Im improve energy flow. And it may be as simple as removing your dog's collar, or it may be as complicated as doing chiropractic adjustment or talking to your physiotherapist or massage therapist. All those are really important elements of good health and healing. I have a physiotherapist, I have a intramuscular needle therapist, I have an acupuncturist, I have a massage therapist, and I have an osteopath. And I see them depending on what's going on. I'm 56 now, I need maintenance, I need tune up, I need good diet, I need detox, but I also need alignment. And your dog is no different. Our dogs are no different than, than us on the level of physicality and the body. Of course, they may have different teeth and slightly different digestive tract, but in summary, the principles of good health are the same. So alignment, don't forget that. And I, read a, I, I write a lot about this particular topic in my blogs. Um, there's many articles if you're interested. The fourth step that I have gradually added because I had to basically say, oh man, like I forgot The fourth step, and of course, if we don't have the repair, the building blocks in diet or the right vitamins or minerals or mega oils or probiotics, we can really function well. But we also have to understand that as we age and our dogs age, deterioration of organs and tissues on body parts is inevitable. We're actually not much different than the cars or the bikes or the fridges and washing machines in the way that no matter what we do, eventually age catch us, catches up with us. And I, I'm not sure whether I've lost the video. I don't think I did. Um, anyway, so the age catches up with us and catches up with our dogs. And I, in the last few years, I've been thinking there must be something else that I'm missing because I just don't want to watch my 15 year old dog deteriorate the way I've seen Sky. you know, no matter how well he was in comparison to other dogs, eventually he wasn't recovering and repairing his injury that he suffered just before the end of his life as well as he would normally. So the lack of the body's ability to repair is super important. And, and how the body repairs is actually rel relatively, I'll, I'll try to give you a simple version of that. If you have an injury or if you have any kind of use and uh, in the body, um, the body has the ability to repair by replicating cells, by renewing cells, by healing cells and the tissue and the organs. And the healing, part of the healing is repair of DNA. And as we age, the DNA starts, the DNA repair is not as efficient and as effective. Um, the cellular metabolism is slower. The mitochondria, the power plants in the cells are not working as well. 
and simply the body, the cells are not able to repair as well. The DNA doesn't replicate. And, and when it doesn't replicate as well, it actually creates these errors. And these errors in replication and repair are what we are seeing, the, the loss of hearing and the wrinkles and the, in the, the visual uh, issues that we have and maybe poor digestion or lack of production of digestive enzymes. Here we go, we have aging. And I've seen some people who are super fit and super keen and kind of staying healthy for a long time. And also some dog lovers who wanna do the same thing with, or most of us wanna do the same thing with our dogs. Kind of believing that if we do, if we take step one, two, three, that we are gonna be fine. My experience is that um, we need to do more and we need to do more research in that area. Um, I have been, you know, I always joke and I say that I make myself the guinea pig before I use anything on dogs, even in experiments. And I've been testing and trying a few different things. Like, you know, some people are so keen about CBD. I, I personally have not seen as good results as I would like to. Maybe I got some stuff that wasn't really potent enough. Maybe uh, we need to do more studies about CBD and dogs. Uh, there are some other um, areas that I really would love to explore. And the preliminary findings are really at least curiously enticing. And what I'd like to do at this point is to invite you, if you have an aging dog or middle-aged dog to invite you to register to uh, a study that we'll, we'll, we'll be actually uh, doing. And obviously I would give you more details when, when, it, when it comes to it, uh, but it will be health and longevity study. It will be um, uh, an anti-aging study of some of the preparation and ingredients that are naturally seen and, 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 and occur in the body and can boost the uh, mitochondrial and cellular metabolism and improve DNA repair. So that's something that I'm really excited about. Um, I am hoping that um, we will be able to implement this soon. To summarize, the whole method of or approach to in holistic healing is, is relatively simple. You need to read the body's signals. You have to ask, is it life-threatening or not? And if it's not, try to address it yourself or with simple means. You know, diarrhea can be really easily addressed by fasting, maybe giving your dog charcoal if he or she ate something bad, giving some probiotics and starting anti-diarrhea diet, which is basically cooked squash and a little bit of chicken broth or some sort of meat broth or bone broth um, for 24 hours and then start feeding regular food again. Um, so if it's not life-threatening, you know, it, it you can actually start learning how to address these conditions by going to our blog and, and the blogs and articles of other trusted colleagues. Um, su support the body. You know, if a, your dog is dehydrated, the first thing should be to correct hydration, not to give anti-diarrheal drugs. If your dog is not better, see a veterinarian. But keep in mind what we just discussed today, that you don't want to use the anti-drugs as the first line of defense. Sometimes you may need to use uh, drugs like antibiotics or um, thyroid medication or insulin. Those meds, those groups of meds are supporting the body when it cannot help itself. Um, when the body has, you know, when there is a serious bacterial infection and you know that, that you have to get rid of the bacteria, it's okay to use the antibiotics, but they should be used as crutches and definitely not the first line of defense. Try to, to determine the cause of the problem. Some dogs have diarrhea because they overextended their lumbar area. I know it's crazy. I talk about it a lot. And over and over, I find people that do not know that lumbar sprain or injuries can lead to diarrhea. Sometimes it can be parasite, like in the case of my friend's puppy. Try to determine the cause, whether it's with your veterinarian or initially you can even do it on your own. Maybe your dog just ate something rotten, right? 
and you have to give it 24 to 40 hours before you start panicking. Um, provide the support to the body. Do not put it to sleep. Do not put the defenses to sleep by giving the anti-drugs. Learn from trusted sources. Um, I'm, I'm so thrilled to hear about uh, articles and read articles from my colleagues. I know that I'm not the only one who does this kind of work. I have uh, though um, decided some time ago that it's going to be my priority and that after 30 years, I basically have exited clinical practice and try to share what I have learned in the previous 30 years. Um, it makes me really happy. It makes me really happy that we have created a system that hopefully works for many people. I um, think that it's super important to be humble and, and continue to learn. Uh, when we pose some sort of controversial issue on um, line, I sometimes read messages from people who basically say, this is how it is and, and, and that's it. But nothing is absolute and especially our knowledge. It's all relative and it's all limited. And I learn that every day. And and learning is learning can be real fun, you know, when we have a problem and try to solve it, and then this we start to kind of learn how other people see it. And we apply some of these techniques and we discover that it actually works. It's fantastic. It's the best feeling. It, you know, I don't care whether I'll get paid for the advice. I just love this process. And that's why we kind of created a company that that can uh, make sustain itself and make a living from creating health as opposed to needing disease. And then I can actually give the knowledge that I've acquired over the 30 years for free. And we have we have at least seven, if I remember well, I, I can't remember the count exactly, but I think that we have seven customer service team members who actually point people to different articles and, and give suggestions and recommendations based on what I taught them and based on what I wrote. Um, I, I have one more thing to share with you. And um, this morning, I, I usually prepare fairly quickly. I, I don't spend a lot of time in preparation because uh, if I started being nitpicky as I'm usually with, let's say my, my general work and my, uh, my product formulas, then I would spend two days preparing this Facebook Live and I just don't have the time. So I was preparing something this morning and I thought, you know, I will, I'm gonna look at, um, at some of the reviews on our site and see what people say. But immediately what I did, I actually and because it's kind of interesting. Uh, let me just uh, go and look up my website really quickly and then I'll share screen. You know, one part of uh, life that I love the most is this kind of excitement and passion from learning. And if we lose it, I think that it's a, it's a sign that, um, that there's something wrong that we are, we are kind of losing the, the energy, the zap. And um, you know, there are so many different ways to, um, to get it back, exercise, good nutrition, um, you know, the right nutrients, but also constant learning and, and making a difference. And the fact that I can sit here and I can help you with um, some of the problems that you are dealing with with your dog and that, uh, that we have created a system that, that, that works for you is making me really happy, really happy. Plus I have actually 20 plus team members who are, who are really happy to work with us because we have a, we have a, we have a fun mission. Uh, we, we, we're like a family and I, you know, I, I will be introducing um, in the course of the next few months, I'll be introducing people in my life uh, to you as well, whether it's my team or my, uh, my people who have had big influence on me or who taught me much. Um, but anyway, going back to going back to the reviews, uh, you can see them on the website at uh, peterdobias.com. Aliyah, I can see that we are missing a menu up at the top. I don't really know how I, I lost it <laughs> here. But anyway, so I, I went here and then I thought, well, I may as well just look at the, at the reviews that are, uh, that are poor. And then I go, well, we, have a, we don't have any <laughs> one-star reviews and two-star reviews. And I thought that may be a problem because we need some negative reviews <laughs> for people to, think, to, to know that they're real. 
But anyway, so the three star reviews were the ones that I finally got to, and I'm just going to deselect the good ones. I'm not going to brag today. Um, oh, okay. Now I think that we are at the three star reviews. So this particular um, uh, dog lover, Pat, said, uh, I purchased Gutsense when it first became available because I believe it's uh, important for good health and that's a probiotic supplement. However, I have a little nine pound poodle that is extremely picky eater and finds the pill ever in every time. I have to throw out more pills than he actually has ingested. So, you know, uh, this is the funny part that we have a negative review, but it's actually not about the product. And, and, um, it's about the dog's pickiness. When we talk about pickiness, I sometimes talk about, um, about um, monkey love. And monkey love is a situation where you do something for your dog that it's not really good for them, but you still do it. And the biggest monkey love in among dog lovers is that we actually, number one, overfeed our dogs. We are resistant to fast them. And we kind of go, okay, he doesn't want to eat that. That means that, that I shouldn't be giving it. Uh, she could mix the pills. She could ask us and mix the probiotic in the food. But instead, um, she thought the product was not good because her dog is picky. Uh, the, the, the funny part is that um, in, in humans, in, in, you know, in families, uh, monkey love is practiced very well. Like I go crazy. Like I, I have to hold myself back so hard when I have uh, my friends or our friends visiting and seeing what they do with their kids. He doesn't want vegetables. He doesn't eat that. He doesn't eat this. Like he likes pizza and pasta. Was it you who actually created this habit or was it you who is saying in front of the kids, oh, he doesn't like this or that. He likes pizza and pasta. You know, kids will not die of hunger when you stop feeding them. The food that they want is not good for them. And the same applies to our dogs. So this was kind of a good comment. I thought I would, I would uh, share with you. Here, um, there is another person, Lee says, um, I love these supplements because they're not synthetic. It would be nice if uh, you, you could come out with more fitting, uh, fitting one for severe allergy sufferers, alpha, alpha, dandelion, common allergens, triggers, and so on. You know, allergies are a problem that I have a very close experience with. I used to be allergic to the point where I was not able to breathe through my nose for six months out of the year. And I left horses and we had to do hay and we had to be in, you know, doing hay and be around horses, super hyperallergenic. I was able to uh, pretty much reduce my allergies to 2% uh, or maybe five, like I almost never have allergies by diet, by proper lifestyle, by reducing dairy, milk products, and um, refined sugars, and, and uh, wheat, refined wheat. I even now eat whole wheat, and it's absolutely fine, but the refinement of the ingredients make, make them, there's some sort of reaction within the body that makes the immune system unhappy, and that's how it starts overreacting. Allergies are an overreaction of the body. So if you have allergies, really, like my sister actually is one, I got one good example. She's got allergies every spring. And I say, Bara, you have to stop eating yogurt and milk and, and dairy. And she says, yeah, but you know that I don't want to do that. But a, a day later, she's going to complain about allergies again. Sometimes we are our worst enemies, you know, when it comes to that. And this, so this dog is allergies. Like I would address, I would, I would, apply the healing cycle first. I know there are many of you who have done uh, allergy tests and uh, swear by them. Our body is allergic when the immune system is misfiring and when it's overreacting. What we need to do, we need to finally tune the immune system so that it doesn't react to the components of our environment that are absolutely normal and natural. So I go one step back and I say, it's not the allergies is the immune system that needs to be finely tuned up. It's not the pollen, it's not the, you know, it's not the other ingredients, but when it comes to refinement um, of let's say wheat or dairy, uh, we need to kind of consider the fact that dairy, for example, is not normal for mammals to consume post uh, weaning. 
and we have created the system, this nutritional um, world where we consume so much milk and so many dairy products that our immune system is overwhelmed. Last one, because that's the only three, three or no, we have five, but I'm gonna go only one, uh, one more, and then uh, we'll go to questions if you have any. Um, Oh, this was actually, um, this was um, a review for a leash, our gentle leash, which I really love because it prevents neck injuries. I've been using this leash for uh, five years, maybe six, um, and I've never had problems with, with it fraying. And I tried to, on several occasions, I tried to break it and pretty much like full force, hang on it and yang on it and never breaks. And I discovered that some people, <laughs> some people let their dogs chew the leash and then they send it back for a refund because they can, right? And so this is one of the other examples what we deal with, but it's not necessarily talking about supplements. <laughs> anyway, um, and that's about it. We have some other stuff we can go and read in the reviews if you want to, but that's not the point of this, this uh, webinar. The point of this webinar is, um, to tell you about healing cycle and the greatest paradox of the medical system that we are using the modern medicine, that's the anti-drugs and suppressing the body signals. So that's the first part of our series. Uh, I'm going to come next time with another part. I would have to look what next time will be. So I'll announce it maybe one or two days before. And um, Leah, are there any questions? Is there anything that that uh, that you would like to share? Uh, we have uh, let's let's do ten minutes for questions, and uh, we will answer the rest of the questions uh, in written form on Facebook. Perfect, sounds good. Uh, yes, we do have a few questions coming in. Lots of great comments. Um, thanking you, Peter, on uh, what you've been sharing today. A few that are really saying bravo to your sister for not taking the ibuprofen. Um, so some great <laughs> coming in. I'll tell her, I'll pass it on for sure. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so one of the questions that's come in, uh, Lily is asking, what about joint maintenance for dogs? You know, joint, um, joint uh, maintenance and, and mobility. Um, part of it is the healing cycle, applying the healing cycle, meaning nourishing, providing the right building blocks, um, working with your chiropractor, physiotherapist, and so on. And the, the fourth one is repair. And I think that the repair, we still don't have completely. I do have a mobility course, uh, mobility and uh, what is it called, Leah? Mobility course for senior dogs. <laughs> And, uh, and, and I do outline the, the elements of the course, you know, basic supplements, uh, 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 glucosamine, chondroitin, perna muscle, turmeric, um, omega oils are huge when it comes to inflammation because they've been proven to uh, reduce inflammatory response, but in the, in the right way, they actually promote the healthy inflammatory response that, that goes through fast, right? If you have a healthy body, the healing happens fast. I have, um, you know, packs, about three, four months ago, ran into a screen and really jammed his, um, his um, neck. And I couldn't believe how quickly he healed from that. Um, I took him skiing, backcountry skiing. He went cuckoo, slipped, uh, he was limping for a day, but he recovered really fast. It's the lack of repair that we need to address. Right now in the course, uh, the, basic, um, the basic elements of what we know are already there. But as I said, I'm really seriously looking at the repair and increasing the body's ability to repair on the DNA level and the cellular level and improving the metabolism of the cells. So we, we, can, we can boost that. Uh, you know, I wish I had some sort of miraculous cure at this point, but I'm super stoked and excited about uh, doing more research. research. So if you, if you do want to register for the research, we will be informing our our community about what we are planning to do. I'm kind of hoping to, um, to start this in the summer, at least in a small limited um, kind of version, and then we'll, we'll take it to phase two. I'm actually phase one because, uh, because I started kind of 
experimenting with some of these uh, natural um, uh, repair supplements. All right, the next one, actually Jan was asking about, um, you know, what can you give a dog with arthritis? Her dog has arthritis. And the course that uh, Peter was just mentioning is called the Mobility and Arthritis course. So that is a great resource for that question as well. Yeah, so any questions around arthritis, uh, please take the course and ask us questions after you do that. But applying the, the healing cycle is super important. If your dog, give you an example, if your dog is missing a certain nutrient, uh, it will not be able to repair properly or function properly. I give you, you know, without magnesium, we know that it affects our, our mobility, it affects our joints, it affects our mind. Uh, everything is interconnected. Um, I, you know, I, I really hope that we'll get out of the period of this is neurology and this is, uh, this is internal medicine and this is uh, diabetes and this is joints. Like we can't really divide the part into sections like that. And this is one of the biggest challenges that I see in um, the modern medicine as well, that people are so specialized that they forget about the patient. What is um, next, Leah? Sorry, my uh, button to unmute myself was a little stuck for a second there. Um, Kim has written in, um, you were talking about allergies and removing allergens. And Kim is wondering, once you remove something from your diet, how long roughly does it take to see results to know if that was something that will affect the response? You know, the funny thing is that I was not talking about removing allergens at all. I was saying, you know, uh, the healthy immune system and healthy body could actually, should actually tolerate um, normal food. Um, to say this, uh, there are certain um, characteristics of the body where, let's say, a, a dog that overheats will do better on uh, the cooling meats as opposed to heating meats like chicken, turkey, and poultry in general. So there are certain preferences that the body, in quotes, has. Um, you know, elimination diet is one of the ways of addressing a problem in the short term, uh, meaning that your dog is most likely going to be will stop being reactive when you apply the healing cycle and when you work someone with someone that that will help. But um, if you do want to do elimination diet, it will take. It is relatively immediate. Uh, I would say that within, uh, you know, my experience is that within a um, couple of weeks at the latest, you will see a difference. If I eat food that doesn't fit me, um, and I, I'd say it's very rare now, but let's say that I would react to some sort of bad fish sauce because it's made in, you know, it's made of really poor ingredients. Um, it, the effects will stop very shortly. So I think that you can stop feeding the food and see how your dog does um, and reintroduce it and see if your dog gets worse again. That would be confirmation that there is something wrong with the food. But it may not be even the chicken protein. Maybe it's the antibiotics or chemicals that had the, the, this, this particular uh, meat has been infused with or uh, the chicken has been treated with. Um, Antibiotics on a regular basis are used in food production, and that can result in hypersensitivity and allergies. I so wish we would able to, we would be able to produce meat without having having animals uh, involved. It would be so lovely, and I know that it's unrealistic and utopia, but um, it would solve many problems. Uh, animal welfare, also the you know the the the, the way uh, animal husbandry is going with antibiotics and drugs uh, in the process of raising animals. It's a big problem. But yeah, elimination trials can be helpful in the intermediate um, stage while you're using healing cycle to make your dog better. And sometimes it's about really talking to um, a veterinarian who is experienced in Chinese medicine practice, uh, practice and he would tell you, um, your dog is overheating. It's probably not good to feed poultry. Your dog will not do as well on that, right? 
That's just a simple example. I'm not a Chinese medicine practitioner, but I, I love using some of the principles from that. Yeah, and I know you've shared some of this information in the recipe maker as well. So we'll make sure that that link is posted for everybody that they can take a look at. That, that is true. That is correct. Thank yeah. you for reminding me. Yeah. No problem. Let's um, do five more minutes. <laughs> five more minutes? Okay. I was about I just, to say we have time just, for maybe one. I know. More I know. I just, I just, I just love being here. <laughs> I just wish I could see you all. That's all. That, that's what makes me sad a little bit. Um, maybe, maybe we can, in the future, we can, we can bring some people for questions live. Um, uh, those of you who have Zoom, or if you don't have Zoom, maybe uh, try to install it so we can, we can possibly invite you. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out how we can do that. I can't promise anything. Maybe it's technically impossible, but I, 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 will, I will explore that option. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, another question that's come in is, what are the best toys or ways to play uh, with your dog, especially a dog that loves the tennis ball? Oh, you guys are serving me such great questions. Uh, the best toy is the toy that is non-toxic. The best toy is the one that doesn't damage your dog's body or teeth. And the best toy is the one that is used sparingly and not obsessively. Uh, tennis balls have, uh, the fiber of tennis balls is abrasive, super abrasive. Um, it's like sandpaper. And if you have a dog that has uh, played uh, with a tennis ball for a lifetime, you will see that teeth are worn down to nothing. It's not from anything else than the tennis ball fibers. Uh, but the other problem with tennis balls, and I, I write about it in, my, in some of my articles, the dogs who are obsessed with balls uh, quite often overuse their body in one-sided way. And some people argue with me. I usually respond by asking whether they've seen a wolf chasing 30 bunnies in 30 minutes. Uh, it's just not a natural way to exist, to be in the park and chase the ball and the breaking and sudden jarring and so on. It's okay once in a while, of course, but the, 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 the ovaries, you know, <laughs> There is a reason why something is called tennis elbow, right? <laughs> so um, uh, be careful about toys, where they're made, what materials they're made. Um, <laughs> Pax loves coconut shells or something that is really natural, right? Like you can even, even if you live in a moderate, moderate climate, you can actually buy a coconut and take a coconut shell and throw it that's a good toy right not not too hard um natural not synthetic not made in china who knows where with fillers um i want to clarify as well one thing that i just said not made in china i respect chinese medicine i respect china don't like the Chinese business ethics uh, that have proven to be a little flawed. Actually, not a little flawed, quite a bit flawed. <laughs> just about a just about a month ago, we had a we had a Facebook Live, and I presented <laughs> to my community these hats. I you may have seen me with with my hat. You know, it's it's a Kangol hat. I really love it. It's made of bamboo, and they're not available. And suddenly, I go online and I see these hats, and so I ordered it, and I got a fake. Uh, but serious fake it was made from it almost felt like wire synthetic wire you know the 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 material that he they make scrubbies from and on top of that it was totally like it was about 50 percent translucent so no sun protection and those little monkeys they actually didn't send me conf order confirmation email and i forgot where i ordered it so i have five of these hats for probably like 150 dollars and i just recently threw them in the garbage and i have no way to know where they came from but the same thing happens with nutrients with supplements with toys with baby food unfortunately we can't trust it right that's why we make all the products um, that we make manufacture in the US and Canada and Norway, and we never source any ingredients from China. And uh, we randomly take products and we test them. We make sure that, that, that they're, they're solid. And I love when my manufacturer calls me and say, Peter, there's gonna be delay in production because one of the ingredients was not okay. We have to reorder it again. And you know, I know that it's a delay and sometimes it means a shortage and 
loss of sales in quotes, I love it. I, in twisted way, I love it because I know I can trust my manufacturer and that I can give the supplements to my dog and I can offer them to you and I can take them myself. It's, it's the weird world, right? Like it's, uh, we really have to be careful. Anyway, I think time is up. It's, um, it's 2.15 Pacific time and um, Leah has been very kind. Thank you, Leah. No problem. And thank you, Christina, who is behind the scenes and helping with, um, with links and answering questions. And we will be back next week and I will be posting some other videos. Um, I have had uh, recently, I've had this kind of idea diarrhea and thought diarrhea, which means I call it thought diarrhea in a positive way. Now we don't need to see diarrhea always in a negative light. Now we've learned in this course. Um, it's good to be inspired and you inspire me inspire me with the love for your dogs the pictures and the connection that we have and and let's let's continue and good luck with everything that you're dealing with i know it hasn't been easy um the most important part is to adapt to find find look for solutions and find them and if you have any questions even outside of uh, veterinary medicine anything that i may have an answer please don't hesitate to email take care bye-bye